I'm John Skinner, and this supports my book, Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. These are the types of bucktails that I use for uh, deep and fast-moving water. The ones on the left of the jar are homemades. Uh, the ones to the right, uh, we've got a couple of store-boughts, and uh, it's tipped with a six-inch strip of Uncle Josh pork rind. Something I cover in depth in Striper Pursuit is fishing for stripers in deep and fast-moving water. And uh, you'll find these sorts of situations in areas where you've got uh, breachways, large canals, channels, inlets, and so forth. Uh, we've got a lot of time. We'll fill the details along the way. Um, what I've done here on this cast, I've got 3-ounce bucktail. I've cast just up current a little bit to lead the current. I picked up the slack quickly with a few fast cranks. Once I felt contact with the bucktail, I'm just letting it drift down current. I'm not cranking. I'm not imparting any rod tip action. I'm looking for an occasional tap on the bottom to let me know that I'm near the bottom. And there's the hit. You don't encounter too many small fish uh, with this technique in, in these situations. Uh, most of these are quality fish and given a halfway decent fish in this kind of current puts a lot of strain on the tackle. This is definitely a uh, type of fishing where um, you need powerful gear. The rod is an 11 foot graphite built on a Lama Glass GSB 1321M blank. Uh, but the blank was purchased in 1990 and uh, that model of blank was a little bit heavier than it is uh, today. The reel is a Penn SSV 8500. It's spooled with 50 pound test spider wire stealth braid. At the end of the braid I have a 44 inch liter of 50 pound test fluorocarbon. I connect the braid to the main line with a high quality barrel swivel. At the end of the liter I have a 125 pound test tactical angler's clip. I mentioned the Penn 8500 SSV. Uh, for decades before using that reel, I used a Penn 706Z for this application. You can see my gaff laying there on the rocks, and uh, that was not just haphazardly dropped there. It's uh, put in a position where I know I have a pretty decent landing spot right below it, because uh, as you can probably see, these rocks are slime coated, they're irregular, and uh, before you ever do this kind of fishing and hook up, you should know where it is that you'll land a fish once you do hook up. So I've got that gaff um, in a strategic location there, in a place where I'll be able to get down and land this fish. On my feet I have Corker's Chrome convertible wading shoes. The convertible part means that you're able to use different kinds of soles. I have felt soles in these. I prefer felt for these conditions. Many guys use spikes. Uh, on my knees I have knee pads. Uh, you can't see it, but I'm actually wearing one of those low profile uh, inflatable PFDs. So should I end up in this water, I can pull something and uh, I'll have a flotation device. This part is dangerous. These waters are calm right here, relatively calm, so you know this isn't too bad. But uh, many times you've got waves coming in and you've got a lot of current. You have slippery, irregular rocks. Uh, people have died doing this. So um, it's safety first and you really have to think about uh, having the right safety gear. And the shoes, the knee pads, the PFD are all part of that. And this is why I use such a long leader, is so that I can uh, get a hold of the line and pull these fish up from a little bit higher up. Another thing is, you can see I'm using the wave. I, I hesitated, I let the fish lay there, I let the wave bring the fish to me. Okay, that last segment was nicely lit. Uh, this is a lot more realistic. Most of this fishing is done in very low light and dark conditions. Again, I've cast up current a little bit, uh, took a few fast cranks to make contact with the jig, and I'm just letting it drift down current. And the thing to focus on here is the tip, and especially to watch for those occasional little bottom taps. I don't want to drag the bottom, 
Um, I don't want to ride five feet above the bottom and never hit it. I want to try to stay just a couple of feet off the bottom. And as I write about in the book, that's really the main objective. A lot of the times when you're fishing uh, stripers in heavy current in deeper waters, try to stay down near the bottom where those fish are going to use that irregular bottom structure to break the current. Now once the jig drifts pretty far down current, the force of the water often will push it up too high and out of the strike zone. At that point, you would just crank it back in real fast and make another cast. In this case, um, I have nobody down current of me. The fishing hasn't been great lately, so there's just not many people fishing. In fact, nobody's here this morning except me. So I was in a position to allow that bucktail to drift pretty far down current and then swing in towards uh, the jetty. Now, what happens in that case is as it gets closer to the jetty, it starts finding a little bit shallower water and maybe even some boulders that are near the rocks. So again, the jig is finding that near bottom strike zone. And in this case, uh, this worked and resulted in a nice hookup. A more typical case uh, in this kind of fishing is that you would have anglers fishing on both sides of you. And in that case, you simply wouldn't have the room to allow that jig to drift all the way down current because you would end up crossing the line of the person that was down current of you. Uh, etiquette is very important in this kind of fishing and people who do this are usually paying attention to the people who are up current and down current. They're timing their casts and uh, in this way everybody can fish without ending up with a lot of line tangles. This fishing isn't for everybody. It can be pretty nasty. Uh, you yeah, know, this is nice. There's nobody here. The, the fishing hasn't been good so there's not even any boats. Uh, many times you've got uh, a fair number of people that are fishing the jetty, you've got boats, you've got big waves coming in, um, so sometimes it's not so fun in that respect, but uh, other times it can really pay off nicely. The nice thing about fishing channel areas like this uh, is that there's actually a fair amount of real estate where the fish can be holding. If you take a look at this piece of water, it's pretty long, there's a lot of rips up and down, and uh, if one particular area tends to get crowded, a lot of times you can just uh, move away from everybody and find your own space and still catch fish. Besides being dangerous, this is a great place to break a rod. Uh, situations like this where you're trying to muscle the fish around the rocks and uh, yeah, many a rod is broken under these conditions.
I dyed this bucktail a wine red color. Uh, it just tends to work well for me in this situation. I'm going to release this fish, but I'm waiting on the waves. I'm trying to get the right timing so that a wave comes in as plenty of water so I can easily put the fish in there and then let the wave take it out. And that's just a nice, safe way to let the fish go. Yeah, this clip is dark, so I'm only going to show up to the point where I hook the fish, uh, but there's plenty of light there to be able to see the rod tip, and that's the part I'm trying to show is uh, to watch that tip and watch the bottom bounces and then when that fish hits. I mentioned using homemade bucktails. Some good store-bought brands are um, Andrus, Blue Frog, and Buccaneer is another good one. The important thing is that the hooks be very strong. When you're climbing down to the rocks to land a fish, it's important that you don't give it any slack or else it could easily be lost. That's what's going to happen in this case. I'm not sure whether I gave it slack or uh, it just popped off. Alright, one more fish to go. I'm done narrating. And to learn more about this kind of fishing, you can check out my book, Striper Pursuit. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my channel.